Welcome to Ghost of a Podcast. I'm your host, Jessica Lignato. I'm an astrologer, psychic medium, and animal communicator, and I'm going to give you your weekly horoscope and no bullshit mystical advice for living your very best life. Learn about colonialism, past, present, and ongoing. Educate yourself about whose land you're living on, and if you can, make a monetary donation or pay a land tax to that tribe. Visit our native land at native-land.ca. The link is in show notes. Tony Howard, renowned Virgo, headmaster of Astrology University, astrologer extraordinaire, and charming homosexual. Does that feel like a good intro? (laughs) I'll take it. Okay. (laughs) Welcome back to Ghost of a Podcast. And uh, thank you so much. It's so great to be here. Yeah, uh, it's cute news. If someone is interested in cuteness, they're going to be disappointed with this episode because you have come back on to Ghost of a Podcast to help me and everyone else understand Mars out of bounds, which I think it's pretty safe to say has no cuteness about it or very little <laughs> cuteness about it. Does that seem like a fair statement? Yeah, I mean, cute really is a better Venus word, isn't it? <laughs> I think I think we could even like throw it into the moon's jurisdiction, but Mars not? is not the cutest of all the planets. And I think Mars out of bounds, even less so. Well, we could use other words with Mars. I know some Mars out of bounds folks who have Mars out of bounds in their natal charts who are quite sexy and they really work the sex angle. I mean, Uh, (laughs) I don't want to brag or nothing, but I I think you're right. I think you're right. Um, So we're going to unpack some really important information about what Mars Out of Bounds is, and in particular, how it is functioning in society ATM, because Mars has been out of bounds since, what are the dates of it? Mars is out of bounds from, well, it was already out of bounds as we're recording this. It went out of bounds March 21st, 2021, and it will be out of bounds until May 24th, 2021. Right. So we're going to dig into a bunch of shit. But one thing I can say with great confidence is that the planet Mars, especially when we're looking at mundane astrology and transit astrology, is associated with passions and urgency. It's associated with fornication and sex and sexiness, but it's also associated with violence. And as I like to say, because I am obviously a poet, it's punch, punch, bang, bang, right? It's like kicking, shoving, fighting by hand, hand hand-to-hand combat, but it's also gun violence. Also burning your house down, crashing something. Yes, yes. It's about action and drive and passion. And when our actions are fueled by passion, can go in all of the directions that you just mentioned. Yeah, yeah, it can. And many others, unforetold, but- And many so, others unforetold. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yes. I'm just trying to speak your Virgonian language. That's all. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to use the full breadth of my vocabulary. So can you share what Mars out of bounds means and how frequently it happens? Let's just start there. Yeah, so out of bounds is just a way of, it it refers to a way of measuring planets that we call declination. So when you look at your birth chart, you look at your horoscope wheel, if you've seen one of those and you've kind of seen where your planets are, that's according to a specific kind of measurement. And then there are other ways of measuring the planet's placements in the sky, the planet's positions in the sky. And declination is one of them, just to keep it simple. And it's just a totally different measurement from the one you're looking in the at in the chart. So it's another way of looking at and analyzing the planet. And out of bounds refers to a planet being at its peak in terms of that measurement. So it's at the highest point it can go. And it's also higher than the sun can go. That's the mm. simplest way I have of saying it. So the planet's at its peak and it's also a bit higher than the sun can ever get. I love that. And it sparks the imagination. But before Mm -hmm. I let you off the hook with your easy to digest breakdown, if I was in the market of trying to figure out what planets in my birth chart were out of bounds, if any, or what planets are currently out of bounds, how would I go about doing that? Is that is there a simple answer to that? Or is that like a full day workshop? No, there's a simple answer. Uh, it's somewhat simple and you just have to know where to look, but you can go to astro.com if you've ever gone there to kind of run your own chart for free. And if you haven't, you can head over there and do that. 
Um, there's a pretty version of astro.com called astro-charts.com that I, really I have that like. on my site can... as well. Yeah. Yeah. I like it's prettier, right? Yes. Um, much, much cuter. We, yes. We like cuter. We do. <laughs> astro.com is a great resource. You can do this on both sites though, but on either site, you run your chart and in astro.com, you're going to click extended chart selection. And then you're going to look for the declination grid. And it's basically a list of numbers that will like, you know, make your eyes glaze over. And it's just a number for each planet. It looks an awful lot like the numbers that you see in the center of your horoscope wheel, where it'll be like a 23 number and then, and then minutes. It'll be like degrees and minutes, like 23 degrees and 28 minutes, for instance. And it'll have like a little N next to it or a plus sign. And that stands for North and South. You can just ignore that because it doesn't, doesn't matter. The number you're looking for is a number greater than 23 degrees and 26 minutes. So if you look up your declination of your Mars, and in the grid, it's usually abbreviated as like D-E-C-L. So, you know, it's a long word, so they don't mm -hmm. usually spell it out in a, in a table because <laughs> it won't fit. Um, so D-E-C-L. And if you look in that list of numbers and your Mars is at 18 degrees and 15 minutes, your Mars is not out of bounds. But if your Mars is at 23 degrees and 29 minutes, it is out of bounds because it's... And just to clear, that number. Sorry to sorry to interrupt, but just to clarify, your the any planet that we're looking at could be at any degree, but we're simply talking about the degree of the declination, correct? Yeah. So your Mars, like in your horoscope wheel, if you're looking at that, and your Mars is at like let's say twenty degrees uh, Gemini, if you look at your declination grid, your Mars might be at a totally different number. Mm -hmm. Like in the in the horoscope wheel, it might be twenty degrees Gemini, but by declination, it might be twenty three degrees and twenty nine minutes, and that means your natal Mars is in Gemini at twenty degrees and out of bounds. So that's Beautiful. How you would say that's that. that's really really helpful to break down. And you know, if you're listening to this and you're just like, wait, what? Wait, what? Don't forget the transcript for this episode will be available on my website, and so you can always. Uh, look at it, read it, return to it, because it it's a little bit of a brain twizzler until you kind of really get it, eh? Yes. and it, But at the end of the day, what's so simple about it is you're just looking for a number that's higher than 23 degrees and 26 minutes. And as soon as you know where to look, it takes like literally a second to find the number and see if it's bigger or less than that. Great. 23 degrees, 26 so, minutes. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you a couple other questions here my friend. So the first one is very broadly speaking, and of course it's different with each unique planet and, you know, there's so many different factors, but very broadly speaking, when a planet is out of bounds in a birth chart, what does it mean? Yeah. So out of bounds is just like a modifier. It's a way to add nuance to your description. So in our example, we were playing with, if your Mars is in Gemini and let's say it's in the fifth house and it's square Saturn, none of that's going to change right? You're still going to interpret all that the same way, but out of bounds is like kind of adding a modifier. So it'd be like your Mars is that Mars and Gemini in the fifth house, but it's wearing a crazy wig, <laughs> right? It's like, and so that's what I mean by modifier. It's still doing its Mars in the fifth house things. It's still having some troubles with its relationship with Saturn, if it's square Saturn, but it's got a unique quality to it. And so, so it's that is it like quality, an accelerant. Yes. What that quality is, is uh, it takes us into some out of bounds keywords for describing that quality. And some of them are extreme, accentuated, uh, above the bell curve, above outside the, bell the box. Curve. <laughs> I like that. I like I all of those one. things, but, but yes. functionally that can go into really creative directions or it can go conversely into kind of destructive, weird directions. They can kind of, it's not inherently good or bad. It can, it can express itself however it expresses itself. Yeah. And one of the reasons I think is because out of bounds planets seem to have a kind of inherent freedom to express whatever they signify in the birth mm -hmm. chart. So in the case of Mars, if you think about if Mars was given free reign to do whatever it wanted to do, what would it do? And then, of course, you want to put that in the context of your Mars and your birth chart. Right. right? If your Mars is square Saturn, you might have a bit of um, you know, natural limit setting kind of built in or some roadblocks. Every time you try to do your Mars, Saturn comes in there and is like, wait, stop, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so but if your Mars is, on the other hand, trying Uranus, 
Mars says go and you already went. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, great. This is really helpful. Now, so that's like just a quick peek at Mars out of um, Mars or any planet out of bounds in the birth chart. Now let's get into transiting Mars out of bounds. How frequently does it happen? And yeah. And what does it mean? So Mars goes out of bounds about once every year. The length of time it's out of bounds is somewhat random. Sometimes it's about a month, sometimes it's two months, and then, you know, it's never exactly the same amount. Sometimes the periods are longer than others. Sometimes Mars will be out of bounds and retrograde, if you've heard of that, at the same time. <laughs> Yikes. And that's kind of like a, a double whammy. Retrograde slows Mars's cycle down, so it'll also, you know, the, the out of bounds will be kind of both accentuated and, and sometimes extended a bit too. Mm. So, but it does happen once a year. So it's a, it's a common occurrence and it tends to happen in uh, certain signs more than others. So there's some signs it doesn't really go out of bounds in. And the ones that are most common are going to be uh, Cancer, Capricorn, Gemini, Sagittarius. Woot. I just said woot for no reason. <laughs> I felt like it needed Was to it be accentuated. You, I think you heard, you heard Capricorn in the mix and you were yeah. like, woot. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, that's true. I was just like, yes, slash, oh no. Um, okay, <laughs> depending on the vibes. Okay, cool. So, and what signs does it never happen in? Generally speaking, uh, planets aren't out of bounds in Aries and Libra and Virgo and Pisces. Lucky, lucky those planets, I suppose, in those signs. Although could be not lucky. I feel like I keep on flip-flopping between out of bounds being amazing <laughs> and slightly scary because I feel like it's kind of both because it's it's like that planet accentuated, right? So it depends on so many factors, but I've kind of digressed. So we come back to one of the first questions I asked you is the dates of the current Mars out of bounds, which is March 21st through May 24th of 2021. And there's something particularly special about this Mars out of bounds that I want you to tell the class about. And, and I think, you know, there's just so much to say about it. So I'm really excited to like dig, dig deep and, and unpack this. I want to return to this idea of the, of freedom. The planet has a, a quality of freedom. That's a bit unusual. And I like to just differentiate this from thinking about a planet having Uranus aspect, for instance, where mm. when planets have, if we have Mars square Uranus or Mars opposite Uranus, we often see the person with that nail chart reactive, reacting against something. So they're standing against something. They're fighting against something. They're saying, you can't restrict my freedom. Don't tell me what to do. Right. And that's got the Uranus quality where you're reacting against something. Whereas an out of bounds planet has a kind of freedom of expression where they already know they're free on that level mm. and they aren't reacting against something. They just have the sense that I'm going to do what I'm going to do. And I don't really care if you think it's weird. I didn't even ask for your opinion. <laughs> uh, so it's almost like there's a, like what you're, what you're suggesting is like a certain level of embodiment around the energies of that out of bounds planet that can lend itself to eccentricities because it's so self-oriented instead of orienting in response or reaction to others or circumstance. Does that sound right? Yeah, you could go there. One thing I often talk about is there can often be a, what from an outsider's point of view looks like a, a lack of checks and balances on the expression of that planet. Mm. It just does what it wants. It doesn't have an internal kind of, maybe you shouldn't do that kind of system or voice. And all things considered, if the planet's an aspect to Saturn, that can turn up the volume on that experience a little bit. But in general, you know, if you think about you know, someone like Bjork, who's one of my favorite examples for out of bounds, because Bjork has three planets out of bounds, Mercury, Venus, and Mars. And uh, there's a really great quote from Bjork at the age of five, where she essentially just says, I figured out that I was a little bit different early on, and I realized I could just do what I was going to do or always be limiting myself according to what other people thought I should do. And I, I just realized early on that wouldn't be any fun. <laughs> you know, so I'm just going to awesome. do my own thing. Yeah. And she had that realization, like that's a realization some people get at their Uranus opposition in their forties, but she had it at like age five. <laughs> because <laughs> so she has so many out of bounds planets. Yeah. She <laughs> just, it, it's an internal kind of natural and that can, it can lead to amazing innovations with Mars, people with Mars out of bounds can do really cool, innovative things. They can be really successful in competitive fields because they have that edge. 
but they can also do really off the wall things and make some choices that we have to say are just not great. <laughs> mm, absolutely. This is really interesting. Before we unpack this fully, because we're going to be talking about current events and some of which are a little scary because they involve violence, it's worth noting something that you're really speaking to, Tony, which is how when we look at predictive astrology or mundane astrology, we're looking at cycles and trends based on historical data and what we understand, whether that's historical data in terms of like actual human history or historical data based on astrological research and investigation, right? So we're not, we're not talking to God and his four henchmen and like, we don't know for sure, if I may. Does that sound like a, like a safe characterization? I don't know if it's safe. Yeah, but, but accurate. Yes, because, <laughs> it, you know, astro astrological prediction is, or, or forecasting, if you want to call it that, is really just educated guesswork at the end of the day. And by educated, we're referring to what you just described is that we're looking back as astrologers at previous cycles. We're looking for trends and themes and patterns. And it's really no different from weather forecasting or economic forecasting. Right. It's the right. same kind of thing. Although those two fields have a lot more respect <laughs> for yes. some reason than we yes. do yes. Uh, yes. For, for reasons unhither toward unknown. What is the word you used? Earlier? Oh, unhither toward <laughs> is perfect. I'm going to say that is exactly what it is. It is unhither toward. And uh, yeah, that's right. But anyway, it, it's like, it's just like weather forecasting in that we, based on what's happened before, when this cold front meets this warm front, this tends to happen. It's just mm -hmm. like that with astrological prediction or forecasting. We look back at the last time Saturn and Pluto were conjunct and we saw this type of event. And then we predict that this kind of theme is going to be relevant during this mm -hmm. period of history. And with this out of bounds cycle, when we look back at previous times that Mars has been out of bounds, this time it's in the sign of Gemini, which is, as we pointed out earlier, one of the common signs. But when it's in Gemini, and we're talking about events in the U.S., which is what we're going to talk about today, uh, it's also interacting with the U.S. chart, which we'll talk about in a minute. But we can look back at those previous events and see a trend. We can yes. see themes emerge. We can see a storyline that gets repeated every time the planet comes back to that same place. And that's what's really interesting. And that's where we can hopefully learn from the past and use the past to make decisions about the present. Mm -hmm. Informed decisions. That's what I mean. That's what we mean by educated guesswork. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's also a really valuable tool because I know a lot of people listening to the podcast are activists and work in politics and other forms of kind of like social justice oriented movements. And I'm really of the mind that astrology is an invaluable tool for understanding where we stand, you know, where we're at and using that information and leveraging it for, you know, our expectations for what is reasonable, possible, likely to achieve in this moment, and to help it buoy us for continued sustained efforts. Astrology is really an untapped resource in that regard. And hopefully that's changing pretty quickly. But yeah, so let's get into this mysterious Mars out of bounds in Gemini and how it is related to the United States of America. The Trans Asylum Seeker Support Network is a revolutionary border abolitionist mutual aid and direct action collective that works in solidarity with transgender asylum seekers fleeing transphobic, state, gang, cartel, colonial, and imperial violence, as well as climate change. They organize alongside their compañeres and support them in building a solid material, communal, and liberatory infrastructure to their lives. They are building non-hierarchical, decentralized, community-based, and international support networks that organize independently from and provide an alternative to the state. Please consider becoming a monthly donor so that they may continue paying rent, legal fees, remittances, medical fees, gender affirmation, surgery fees, travel fees, and more. You can give through this link at givebutter.com slash T-A-S-S-N link in show notes. 
You probably already know by now that I record Ghost of a Podcast on Anchor, and I do that because it's the easiest way to make a podcast. It's free, and there are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. Anchor distributes your podcast for you, which is super convenient. It can be heard pretty much everywhere from Spotify to Apple Podcasts and across all the platforms. And you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one easy place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today. Like this show and want to make your own? Let me tell you about Anchor. It's free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit right from your phone or computer. And best of all, with Anchor, you can add any song from Spotify directly to your episode. The possibilities are seriously endless for what you can create. You can do music analysis, create your own show, deep dive on some artist or genre that you're obsessed with. Anchor will even help you publish your show to Spotify so you can reach hundreds of millions of listeners. If you've got an idea for a show with music, get started by downloading the free Anchor app or going to anchor.fm. And if you need some inspiration, head over to blog.anchor.fm slash music for some idea starters. In the chart for the United States of America, the well, the chart that I use is called the Sibley chart. Yeah, it's, it's the most one of the conventionally most common used. charts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and there are several charts that when we say there are several charts for the United States, there everybody disagrees on the time. Most people generally agree on this within the realm of a, of a few dates. There are some people who kind of go far afield of July fourth, seventeen seventy six, but most people will use that date and then disagree on the time. When we're looking at anything but the moon and the houses, everything else is on that day is going to be pretty much in the same spot. So Mars is going to be in its same spot, no matter which time you use. So at the end of the day, it doesn't matter which time you use, but we're using the Sibley chart. And in that chart on that day, Mars is in Gemini and out of bounds at 21 degrees Gemini. And again, just if you're learning this technique, that 21 degrees is not the declination number, right? That's the number you see in your little horoscope wheel, Mm -hmm. right? So 21 degrees Gemini in the natal chart for the United States. Well, it turns out we kind of have a Mars return right now. And that just means Mars has returned to the same place that it was in that chart. So we're talking about the US chart. So Mars has returned to 21 Gemini during this cycle. And that was, uh, I think a few days ago. So let's just take a moment to pause and kind of like drink in this actually really substantive thing you just shared with us, which is within the Sibley chart, within the United States's birth chart, essentially, we as a nation have Mars out of bounds. And as a nation, you know, that really that matches, doesn't it? It's like this idea of like how we are in the world and how we are incredibly innovative and how, you know, the origins of our country were very radical uh, at the at the time, eh? And also, we're a pretty damn violent country. You think? I don't know. But yes, I do think so very much. And it's interesting because, um, you know, we're the, quote, land of the free. And that liberty, it's a concept. I think we can pull Uranus, Jupiter, and Mars into the conversation about liberty from an astrological viewpoint. But it's just really interesting to me to learn, which, of course, I have learned this from you, that the United States, Mars is out of bounds. I didn't know that, but it makes perfect sense. And then yes. one other thing I just kind of want to like pause to like pull out and say is whenever then we have Mars hitting that 21st degree or, or around that 21st degree of a mutable sign, we have a conversation to be talking about. Or essentially whenever any planet hits that 21st or right around that 21st degree of a mutable sign, um, which is of course Gemini, Sagittarius, Pisces, and Virgo, <laughs> any planet hitting around that 21st degree of a mutable sign, it's stimulating our Mars out of bounds, right, as a nation. So when we're talking about this, us as a nation, we're not talking about individuals. We're talking about like our systems, our society. Does, is that right, Tony? Did I, did I nail that? That's exactly right. And when you look back at the transits of Mars to those points, it's very interesting what happens. I mean, some of you might have noticed that uh, violence erupts in the United States on a regular basis. Yes, <laughs> yes. But uh, the United States has a history, a long history of, of violence, all types of violence, personal violence, systemic violence. And whenever Mars goes out of bounds, and it seems especially so, I'm in the middle of doing this research, but in the preliminary stages of the research, 
every time Mars hits one of those trigger points and is out of bounds, and that's going to be especially in uh, Gemini and Sag, but it also happens in Cancer and Capricorn. And we're talking about that 21 degrees. So 21 degrees Gemini or 21 degrees Sag, there are major events that kind of stand out in our history that describe these peak periods. Mm. And so that word peak is a really great out of bounds word as well. Mars, in my view anyways, and I'm curious if you have a different uh, opinion, Mars governs prisons. It's like a punishing place that we put people and we put them to work. Um, and I have a lot of thoughts about about prison. And, you know, I think we can look to Saturn, we can look to Pluto. Um, I go to Saturn, to Pluto Mars. and combo, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it's a tricky thing. But the United States is, you know, I mean, we're known globally for imprisoning people. It's a huge industry and uh, it's a huge part of our unfortunate reality. And I'm also, I mean, I can't help but be curious about when Mars gets hit at that out of bounds point, like are there themes around imprisonment or about our our prison system? I haven't seen that one stand out. Some of the standout events I've seen so far and looking back at it, and now I'm focused on the United States. And so far I've just been focused on the last hundred years. I studied uh, 20th century American history in college. So that's kind of my area of expertise in terms of history, but I will eventually look outside that as well. But I just wanted to name that. Mm. But looking at that hundred year period, uh, civil rights issues, big, big, big standout. Major events in US history over the last hundred years, including the moon landing, but the JFK assassination, the 9-11, um, the, the World Trade Center bombing before 9-11, um, these major events that you look back in history and can name, if I just ask you to name, what are the top 10 most violent events in the United States history that you can think of? A lot of those, if not most of them or all of them, will, be, will take place during Mars Out of Bounds period. And often, like in the case of the JFK assassination, that happened when Mars was exactly at 21 degrees Sagittarius opposing the natal Mars and transiting Mars is also out of bounds. Mm, interesting. But that the civil rights issues, uh, violence, violence against protesters, that's a, that's a theme that stands out. And not all protests where there's been a violence response took place during a Mars out of bounds period, but some key ones, major, major ones did. And it's interesting because when you name protesting, protesting is a kind of like embodied, passionate, urgent response to injustice or oppression, generally violent oppression and injustice. So it's really interesting to hear you say that. I mean, I put the protesting energy under the Saturn Uranus aspects, especially for the United States. That's that's a really common theme. You can trace this back to the Civil War when there are Saturn Uranus aspects, and that could be the conjunction and the square opposition, etc. Mostly we're you know focusing on the hard aspects here. We can predict that protests will kind of, the volume will be turned up on protesting in the United States about something. We can't always predict what the protests are about. We can just predict that people are in the streets protesting about something. Mm -hmm. uh, the Mars out of bounds piece comes with those kind of more violent correctives or responses to the protesters in, in certain instances. But the protesting in general, I think falls a bit more under the Saturn Uranus cycle, which we're in right now, which, which is why we're having this conversation. Right, right, because right. against the, against with the, all this increase in shootings that we're experiencing right now in the United States, that's all happening against the backdrop of this social unrest yeah. that's that's part of the context of the Saturn-Uranus cycle. And I mean, arguably the Saturn-Pluto cycle that started last year and the Pluto return forthcoming. I mean, there's so many, it's really hard when looking at things like protest or civil rights movements or any, any one you know, major thing to look at it in a vacuum. And if you're listening, you know, it, it's tempting to try to point to one thing astrologically and be like, that's the reason. And there can that's be truth the reason, to that. Yeah. yeah. But it's, it's, it's yeah. really, it's like cooking a, a soup or a stew. It's, it's, you know, one ingredient, maybe instrumental might change everything, but it really, is the it's how it all cooks down together and this is part of why prediction with astrology with mundane events in particular it's it's like you can get the solid flavor but it's hard to get like what's going to be in each spoonful because there's too many variables yeah and and i think you know great mundane astrologers are able to hold 
a few of these cycles in mind at once and weave them together into the narrative that's emerging in the collective. And But getting back to this current cycle, and if we think about, if we look back at previous cycles, you know, I mentioned earlier that there's a kind of a civil rights theme and story. There are things like, you know, JFK, when he took some action uh, towards affirmative action in, in terms of the federal government, where he kind of instigated some of those policies, that took place during a Mars out of bounds period. And as you know from, as you might know from looking at history, white racist America just didn't say, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Right. <laughs> so right. there was a little bit of a negative Marsy, violent in some cases reaction to that when uh, schools were being integrated and, you know, six-year-old Ruby Bridges was first brought to this uh, school for integration. That happened during a Mars out of bounds. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so on that one, and then that one happened on November 14th, 1960, while Mars was out of bounds in Cancer. Mm. And one thing I forgot to mention earlier is that in this current cycle right now, Mars is in Gemini, but Mars, we're in a long Mars out of bounds period. So this one's a little bit unusual in that it's about a two month long Mars out of bounds period. And Mars will be in, in Gemini for the first half, it'll be in Cancer for the second half. In general, most of May is going to be Mars out of bounds in Cancer. So we can expect then in May for these Martian themes that are playing out around gun violence and other Martian themes, we can expect it to change flavor is what you're saying. Yes, yes. Right now, I think that the the vibe for me personally, and you can jump in here with your own thoughts here, but with Mars being in Gemini out of bounds, I think Mars in Gemini increases that stress vibe, Mm. you know, Gemini, when it's out of balance, can be stressed out and a bit frantic and a bit scattered. Mm -hmm. That energy, that's Mars's energy right now. So how we're taking action, what we're doing, I'm just thinking about my own, the actions I've taken in in the last month, and I've been a bit frantic and scattered and all over the place myself. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And it's led to a certain kind of uh, tiredness and stress, right? And when we get out of balance in that way, we don't make our best choices. When we're tired and stressed out, uh, and overloaded, overwhelm is a good one for Mars and Gemini as well. Uh, you don't make your best choices. Yeah. That will shift a bit. And then we'll be seeing a bit more maybe of some of the shadow cancer side, right? Where some of our actions that we take are emotionally driven. You know, we lash out in anger or we get vindictive. You know, we, we feel hurt. So we want to hurt the person who hurt us. You know, that's yeah the lowest functioning version. We're not saying that all people with Mars and cancer are like that. Of course, we're just saying that on your worst day, when you don't have any of your resources and you're kind of like, you know, we all have bad days. We make bad choices. And I'm just describing what that might look like. So the tone tone will shift, but I, you know, we've been seeing a crazy increase. You had that stat earlier. I'm not sure if you shared it, Jessica, about the numbers of shootings we've had just in the last month. Yeah. So yeah, um, as of, Sunday, the 18th, I believe it was of April, there were 45 shootings um, in the United States in one month. And then on, you know, I I recorded, I said that on my podcast, um, and then woke up to find two more mass shootings that day. So I think we're at 47 or 48. As of today, and you and I are recording this on the 19th of April. um, But the day is still young. uh, Unfortunately, I mean, this is really just an really dramatic presentation of of gun violence and mass shootings. And, you know, it's interesting, because when I think of that Mars and Gemini out of bounds that we're going through right now, I can't help but see it in concert of two other events. One is the larger Saturn Uranus square, which I obsessively talk about all the time because of the psychological stress and strain that it provokes and how that on the kind of back of all that Saturn Pluto energy we're going through in 2020, it's just, I feel like so many people, so many masses of people are just waiting for the last straw for their mental health, you know, and this thing of snapping is so Saturn Uranus. And then when we add to that, um, something that you and I were talking about right before we started recording, Neptune's involvement, you know, when we talk about Neptune in general, it can be associated with fanaticism because it's about um, kind of like this puritanical vision of things, right? It can be very idealistic. There's like, and I don't know if this is me jumping the gun to talk about it in the context of Mars, but it is right now, I believe at 22 of Pisces. Is that is that right? 
Yep. It's yeah. at Neptune's exactly at 22 Pisces. It's exactly opposite the placement in the U.S. birth chart, which is 22 Virgo. And square to the United States Mars. natal <laughs> Mars out of bounds, yeah. which it is yeah. again right at this degree. So we have this like idealism and the kind of disassociation that I think the United States is really good at being in that weird, at times very unhealthy sweet spot. And then when you're talking about Mars moving into cancer out of bounds, you know, when we're looking in mundane astrology. Mars and cancer can be associated with nationalism and it can be associated with clannishness. It does worry me, you know, in the context of gun violence and all of these things. And I think, you know, from a humane perspective, part of what motivates people to act in violent ways during this period, and in particular during this period with all those things we just named, is a sense of losing control and seeking to lash out as in efforts to gain control um, or dominion. And does that make sense to you as I, as I see it through the planets? Yeah. I mean, if you're putting things in the greater context, I think one of the things that's happening with a lot of the shootings though is, and it's my hope that this period that we look at here the last month and potentially for the next month, that it has bookends on it, right? That it's a mm-hmm. bit, it's a bit of a of a, an extreme blip because Mars is out of bounds. And in some of these individuals' cases, it's just people flying off the handle. It's just people losing their shit. Losing right? their shit. On yeah. an individual level. It's just people losing their shit. In the context of that, there are these also these stories around uh, systemic racism and violence in those contexts where they're there really are part of this longer trend and longer cycle. And that's one of the things that has been interesting looking back at the last hundred years of Mars out of bounds transits with the United States in that context. And in this sense, Mars is acting as a trigger and mm. it's, it's triggering something that you just named unfolding in that larger context of the Neptune transit and the, and the Saturn Uranus transit. This specific trigger is finite, right? It's out of bounds mm. in Gemini this month it's out of bounds in cancer next month, and then it goes back in bounds and it changes signs and keeps moving through the zodiac. And as Mars returns back to this place, like while it's in Gemini, where it's a Mars return for the US, so to speak, and this happens frequently, we know, but in the context of that Jessica just described, it's unusual, right? It's in the context of, for instance, you know, Saturn Uranus, if we just stick there, that doesn't happen every year, right? So that's right. specific to this year in those signs, Saturn being in Aquarius, Square Uranus and Taurus. That's specific to this year. And two years from now, that'll shift. We'll be talking about something else on this podcast. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but Mars is going to go out of bounds again in Gemini, more like clockwork, as in it, it's going to act as a trigger for whatever themes are arising then. Mm-hmm. But in every time it returns, in my opinion, it's a chance for the U.S. to look at its own Mars out of bounds Gemini issues. It's a chance for us to look at gun violence. It's a chance for us to uh, talk about gun control because we're seeing examples of the shadow side of having Mars out of bounds in Gemini where we where have an itchy trigger finger, right? Mm. And we love our guns and we love shooting them and do not take our guns away and all that. Yeah. Well, okay, if you have that stance, Mars out of bounds comes back to the place it was in the US chart and we have a chance to review those assumptions and review those ideas and think, is that really a good intention? Can we do something else with that Mars out of bounds in Gemini? Mm. Yeah. And it's interesting because we're talking about Mars and we have yet to mention masculinity. And um, I think that that's a meaningful part, of course, of Mars and of the United States and the role of, of maleness or like that, you know, kind of archetype, that American male archetype that American males often really like to to embody. And it's interesting because something I've been thinking about a lot is when are we going to actually categorize male violence against women as a hate crime? Because right now we call it domestic, um, which is really <laughs> fucked up. It's a fucking hate totally. crime. It is a hate crime. Right. And at, at a certain point, and I'm starting to cultivate this idea that perhaps it will happen or something will, will pivotal will occur around a Mars out of bounds um, or some transit to the nation's Mars out of bounds to actually get that change legislatively. And of course, Mars isn't necessarily related to legislation, but I think that the conversation around masculinity and toxic masculinity is a big one in this country and it, and it needs to become a bigger one, IMO. I don't know if that's yes, a departure, because but... we, 
not a departure at all. It needs to become bigger because we haven't resolved it yet. And yep. just like transits in your personal chart, they give you a chance to revisit your own issues and come to some healing with them. Ultimately, I mean, that's a best case scenario. Sometimes we just act them out in the worst way. And we, the healing comes later when we review our past and we're like, should I really have done that? Yeah. Oh <laughs> shit. Now life is really, really hard. And I have to bear account for what I did or didn't do. Yeah. And I think, I think that when we look at a country, you know, when we're looking at a nation, we're looking at masses of people, but we're also looking at the government. We're looking at like, you know, masses of people may disagree with something, but what the nation decides to do is what the nation does. And I think this is where it's like, you know, a little bit conceptual, right? Looking at the chart of a nation, because we're not looking at the chart of each individual in that nation, right? We're looking at That's the, right. this nation in the context of the global community. Yeah. Yeah. And so the out of bounds periods for the United States, because Mars is out of bounds in the US chart, they're really periods, I think, when we see a bit more acting out. And so the response to those events. Uh, whether it's 9-11, whether it's, for instance, the uh, when Rodney King was brutalized by police officers, that happened in 1991 while Mars was out of bounds in Gemini, right? So the acting out happens during the out of bounds period. And then the response to that, the healing that can potentially come after that, that's much later. That's not part of the, the out of bounds period. The out of bounds period is where we're, we're acting out our Mars for good or not for good. Mm -hmm. Also during Mars out of bounds period, we see great advances and innovations and, you know, cool things happening because Mars is unleashed mm. to do its best or do its worst. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and so, you know, the Rodney King event is still resonant with the events that are happening today with the public discourse today, because we still haven't healed the conditions that led to that event in, in right. this country. And policing is inherently won't. racist. And the, there is a way that what happened in that Mars out of bounds, but which also coincidentally is the last time Saturn was in Aquarius, right? So there's another layer to look at. I mean, we actually haven't achieved any healing or progress, any real meaningful progress since that fucking time. So it's really, you know, to your point of Ideally, we learn our lessons, but not necessarily. And I think that, you know, currently in 2021, we are starting to have more of a national conversation about police abolition um, and police reform, like substantive uh, defunding or abolishment of the police. I don't know how far we're going to get, but it's not surprising to me that that conversation is happening in mainstream media during this Mars out of bounds in a way that I haven't actually heard it. Uh, before. And, and I think that conversation really started in greater earnest when Saturn hit Aquarius uh, in 2020. That was the moment that that happened. And this is something that I think is a big part of this Saturn and Aquarius uh, transition, right? Or transit rather. But in particular, understanding Mars out of bounds role to play is just fascinating. Yeah, it is. It is. And I, I like to think that there's been a tiny bit of progress, honestly, since 1991. One of the things that I noticed, and I, I chalked it up to Saturn and Aquarius too, uh, Jessica, which last year was uh, if you compare the response um, by the public, the response by, you know, the authorities in charge of filing charges against the police, et cetera, very, very different last year, mm -hmm. right? With, Radically with different. George Floyd. Yes. Radically different. So there was an improvement. There wasn't an improvement in terms of the conditions that led to the violence by the police, right? So that still exists. That problem wasn't solved. But what changed was the public response. And then also, there was a bit more accountability introduced. And we all have hopes that we'll see some real accountability this time with mm -hmm. George Floyd. I think that I think the nation is watching these trials with the hopes that we're going to really see accountability this time. And I think with Saturn and being in Aquarius, we just might. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's interesting because here we're we're getting into maybe some of our also our personality differences as described by our birth charts of our optimism and our take <laughs> on events. Um, <laughs> but also, this is a really interesting thing because again, we're talking about Mars out of bounds, and we're talking about inevitably police, and we're talking about violence, right? And I think what's really important is while yes the public response is different and the willingness and passion and urgency of the populace 
to stand up, hit the streets, to say no, to say this is not just. That is radically different than it was in the 1990s. But what isn't different is the function of the police, the violence of the police, the power of the police. I would say arguably they have more weapons, they have more power, and the the imprisonment of black and brown people in this nation, it's worse. Um, And the prison industry is more powerful. And so this is where when we look at these things, you know, it's really it's complicated talking about something like the chart of a nation because we're both talking about the soul of the nation and the populace, but we're also talking about the governing structures. We're talking about them both at once and we're seeing them both at once in the event chart of the United States, of, in that Sibley chart. And so this is where looking at mundane astrology does require some uh, flexibility because we're looking at both of, all of these things at once in the Mars or in any given point on whatever topic, right? So it's it's complicated. And I am, you know, as a, as a very, very Capricorn person, I am predisposed to want to look at the worst of all the things because uh, because to me, you know, I have this nature where I'm like, well, if I look at the shitty, difficult things then I know what to work on, the positive things don't need my attention. I just want to focus on the shitty things. I don't mean to brag, you know, and I don't think anyone <laughs> should do what I do at home. However, that is that is absolutely my nature. And so, yeah, so it's all it's all layers and complication. Yeah, definitely. And I, I think it's so important to look at the the shadow side of life and with eyes wide open, you know, you and I both have a a bit of a Plutonian approach that way. (laughs) A little bit, a little bit. Yeah. Just a little. Due to some hitherto unmentioned. (laughs) I just like to call them my Aspects in our natal charts. We just call them our our unmentionables and we, yes. And we let the people guess. Yes. That's right. But, but yes, I think look, looking at these things with eyes wide open and also I have no illusions that the skies will open up and the, the wrongdoers will be justly, you know, corrected and, Mm -hmm. and everything will get better. No, this is an old, old story in the United States. Newsflash, it's not going to get resolved this year. Mm -mm. It's not just going to work out. Right. Mm -hmm. But I do believe that we have an opportunity to make steps toward that progress this year. And it's a, it's a time when the volume gets turned up where we can, we can make, you know, three steps forward instead of one step forward or, Mm -hmm. you know, we've also gone backwards sometimes. Right. But I don't think this is a backslide year in terms of that kind of, of progress with some of those issues. I think it's a backslide year though, in the sense that, we have to say that with this increase in in gun violence and with everything we know about the, you know, we could talk about the NRA here mm-hmm. and, and and with um, the militia movement and all of that is part of this as well. You know, we could see some of those stories kind of pop up in the next month as well. And we're definitely going to see the NRA story pop up because we're already seeing, of course, in the wake of all these shootings, calls for gun, tr- gun control. And yeah you know, which well, have been ignored for the last few years. And right now, I don't know that we'll make progress on that issue, but just, just turning up the volume on the conversation can, yeah. can maybe set the stage for change to happen in the future. Yeah. And I think, you know, what we're seeing with this out of bounds Mars hitting the nation's Mars is we're seeing the volume turned up on what is. And I think that that's an important thing. We're not getting new data. We might be having new experiences that are exacerbating pre-existing data. And I think that's an important thing to kind of understand in this conversation. And the longer I sit with this information and the longer that I, you know, consider all the data points, I can't help but wonder about May and, you know, the insurrectionists and the highly armed, you know, violent, angry, white nationalist faction of the United States. Because in mundane astrology, in its kind of least healthy presentation, the sign of cancer, the zodiac sign of cancer is associated with nationalism and clannishness, which it's not great, you know, in in this context and in the context of what's happening in this country. And, you know, as I will always say to everyone, when it comes to either birth charts or mundane astrology, astrology is not guesswork. It is wise and appropriate to look at the news, to ask questions, to understand what is happening, and then to apply what we know about astrology to the facts, right? And so this is where having a highly armed populace 
and a very diverse populace with very different values can become alarming. And I don't say this to frighten anyone. This is already happening. So it's not like, oh, shit, what's that look like? It looks like today and yesterday and last month and <laughs> the month before, right. you know, it looks like the last 50, 100, 300 years. Right. And I think we are in a brand new place in many ways. And it's hard you know, for me to resist the urge to want to talk about technology and the role of technology, both in filming cops and also in the role of technology in organizing for all manner of social movements, right? The ones that I'm really a fan of and the ones that I'm terrified of both. And so there, there is a lot to say, and that's for another conversation in a different planet, perhaps. But I, I do want to because I know we don't have a lot more time, Tony, you're a goddamn peach for teaching me and us about Mars Out of Bounds, which BT Dubs, you're writing a book on the topic, aren't you? Yes, yeah. yes. And it will be the definitive book on Out of Bounds planets that every budding astrologer and professional like will need to have in their library. Is that not a fact? <laughs> spoken like a trip spoken like a triple capricorn i might not have said it that way with all of my virgo planets <laughs> that's right that's right i would never say that about myself so i'm saying it for you okay you will need this book once it's out because there's not a lot of data out there about out of bounds planets it's kind of actually it reminds me of interceptions in that it's such a useful tool and it's not an uncommon thing but there's not a lot of data out there yet about it so so everybody subscribe to tony howard's you know, news feeds and whenever his book comes out, you will purchase it and you will <laughs> delight in it. Well, thanks so much for inviting me on the show. I mean, I, obviously you and I could do a whole nother hour on this topic. I mean, maybe, we maybe almost we can did. Talk about it again. <laughs> yeah, I would, I would love to. And then I also wanted to check in and see, I know you have a ton of research with past dates when um, Mars was out of bounds and it hit the U.S. chart um, in a meaningful way. Is that something you'd be down to share if we can throw it in the transcripts or make it available um, to listeners? Yeah, for sure. It's incomplete in the sense that I have six planets in Virgo and a Mercury-Pluto <laughs> conjunction and nothing is ever complete for me, but I do have a lot of data points I can share for sure. Okay, great. So so what we'll do, um, if you're interested in this topic and you want to learn more, Tony generously, um, we'll open source some of this research, understanding it is not complete. And um, <laughs> we will make sure to attach that to the transcript of this episode, which will be available on my website uh, a few couple few days after the episode comes out. So you can look for it there. And again, you know, follow Tony and you can listen to Tony's podcast, the Astrology University podcast. You can also learn with Tony at Astrology University because you know I don't fucking teach, but Tony does. And if you want to learn <laughs> details, learn from somebody with so much Virgo in their chart that people call them Virgo as a nickname. <laughs> um, and I think that's maybe only me. Do I only, am I the only one who does that to you? No, no, you're not the only one. This won't work for your podcast, but I actually had a, f a friend with a Sagittarius moon. If, if you know astrology, there's a square between Virgo and Sagittarius. And she had a hand gesture for Virgo where it looks like the, um, Star Trek. Looks like the, yeah, the, the Star Trek, like live, uh, live the, long and prosper. What is that? That means Spock is a, is a, Vulcan. uh, Vulcan. Yes. The Vulcan hand signal for live long and prosper where your fingers are pointing up and it kind of makes a V. Yeah. Um, she would call that Virgo good. And then she would turn it upside down for Virgo bad. Okay. So first <laughs> so. of all, I need you to know that that's going into the podcast because I literally am obsessed with this whole topic, but I feel like you've just started a trend. Um, live long and prosper being Virgo good and then upside down Virgo bad. I mean, every Virgo and the people who love them are going to adopt this. You watch you damn trendsetter. You watch. Um, okay. Well, so I have to, I have to give props to Allison Fox here, you know, and Virgo good means like, you know, the Virgo is helping you when you ask them to help you. Virgo bad is Virgo is helping you when you have not asked them. To or you've begged you them to stop. You don't want their help. When you've yes. begged them to stop. I say with all the love in my heart. Um, okay. Well, I cannot thank you enough for joining me and helping me understand this more and sharing so much of your research and data. And uh, yeah, thank, thank you for doing so. And I hope you are safe and healthy during this fucking Mars out of bounds moment. 
You too. And, and uh, blessings to all of you listeners out there. Thanks for listening to our convo and what we're holding space for your, for your safety as well, but mm. do some cool things with your Mars out of bounds too. Yeah. Do some you, cool if shit. You're feeling the call. Yeah. Also have sex, have weird sex, have passionate sex. We forgot to say that, but it deserves to be said. Pound yeah. One out. If, that, if that's yeah. <laughs> Pound one out. <laughs> but <laughs> What you may not know is that it's easy to make Tony Howard blush, and I just did it. Um, I'm totally red right now. (laughs) (laughs) You are. You are. Um, That's going into the podcast. Okay, thanks. Bye. Bye. Every year they say the end is near, but we're still here. Yeah, we're still here.